Hi, we will discuss about some case studies in financial crime analytics or also known as compliance analytics. So what is financial crime? Well, financial crime involves anti-money laundering, fraudulent transactions, sanctions. Uh, we will discuss about how to tackle these problems using data and analytics. Banks and non-banking financial organizations, payment companies, insurance companies get impacted by this, but also customers of these companies also get impacted by this. Now, banks have been tackling with these issues for uh, many years and decades already, but the legacy solutions uh, in place are not very suitable. And uh, it's important, therefore, to replace them with a more advanced system uh, using data and analytics. And I'll discuss what are the problems which can be better tackled using uh, advanced analytics. So why use data science in uh, financial crime? Uh, well, in order to combat financial crimes, it's important to outsmart these fraudulent people. And these people are very smart. They're using very sophisticated technical tools to outsmart the banks. So in order to be able to combat them, it's important to uh, replace the legacy or bit boring systems uh, and uh, make it more uh, sophisticated, more advanced using advanced uh, data analytics. And because there is, there is a huge amount of data in, uh, available with the banks when it comes to uh, transactions, when it comes to savings, when it comes to customer information, it is therefore easy to build data science models uh, and that can be used to combat financial crimes. And the events uh, of financial crimes are very well defined. So it is easy to build models where the event or the problem is, is well defined. And uh, benefits of the modeling uh, is already evident in uh, many other areas of finance, such as credit modeling or customer analytics or market risk modeling, right? So it is not a new thing for most banks and payment companies. In fact, payment companies are already using uh, some uh, less advanced modeling techniques and, and they're now replacing uh, their less advanced modeling techniques with more advanced analytical uh, modeling techniques. And there are many good ca use cases already available. Uh, for instance, with Visa, American Express, MasterCard, they're already using, I think banks have started building those capacities as well. One such case is the transaction monitoring. So what is transaction monitoring? In uh, banking, uh, transaction is nothing but just a, a payment, right? Someone is paying money to some other party and bank is just an intermediary. Now, there could be fraudulent intention also. For example, terrorist financing is one such fraudulent intention or money laundering could be a fraudulent intention or uh, illegal trade activities, human trafficking, drug dealing, you know, these can be fraudulent intentions. So in order to monitor these activities, you know, to flag those suspicious transactions, you cannot do that using manual rules. Uh, that's practically impossible. So manually checking each and every transaction is practically impossible. Banks have been using rule-based model of scoring for quite some time, but uh, that's also not very efficient. The accuracy rate is very poor, and therefore it's important to use more advanced analytical models. And in case there is lack of data, alternate data can also be explored for uh, increasing the accuracy of these models. When I say alternate data, it could be, you know, data available about a given organization or given uh, person uh, who, who has some criminal history and something is written about him uh, in some media on, on some online publications. So those sort of data can be leveraged in order to increase the accuracy of prediction. And uh, there are some use cases available, but it's still evolving. And there is a bit more regulatory pressure nowadays in order to build those advanced uh, capacity and not to rely on these rule-based uh, models anymore. So 
banks are building their TMS tools, so transaction monitoring system tools, and it, these tools are more real time in nature. That full automation uh, is very difficult to achieve, though. Uh, even though the whole intention behind building and implementing such model is to automate everything, but the best approach is to make it hybrid because uh, there may be instances where there are just too many false positive cases and then you cannot simply go on um, combating each one of them so it's important therefore to uh, have another layer of checking uh, manual checking so good to have a hybrid process and segmentation is is key in this case there is no one size fit all rule that's not going to work simply because <clears throat> Uh, the transaction model uh, for let's say a given segment of the customer would be very different from another seg segment of customers right uh, you could also have uh, segmentation based on whether it's a retail customer whether it's a commercial customer uh, you can also segment based on countries based on uh, other things also right other geographies and everything Then one other case study is the building models uh, for KYC. KYC is uh, know your customers. So when you onboard customers, you need to have the knowledge about your customers. And that's nothing but know your customer or KYC. And it's often a very manual process and it's hence it's very prone to errors. But there is plenty of opportunity to automate KYC process. Many banks have in fact started doing that you can now upload your information whether it's uh, information about your identity whether it's your income you can upload uh, information about all these things and the application process will be automatically approved or disapproved based on the information that you have provided so KYC can full, be fully automated but it's not very efficient yet. Models are not working that efficiently. Getting data from uh, physical files is also a big challenge for many companies. But there's a lot of scope there. And uh, especially the fintech companies are doing it uh, amazingly well. The traditional, the big banks are not able to do that properly, although they have started exploring uh, these techniques as well. And many banks, in fact, have already implemented uh, segmentation as I mentioned is very key on this but over reliance on automation is also an issue so that's something to uh, care about which is that if you completely automate everything uh, it might be an issue because these models are very new actually so you do not actually know if the performance of these models will be good so one thing is to cross validate your model uh, well before you implement that's absolute must but after you have implemented, you also need to monitor these models on a regular basis just to be sure about the accuracy. And in order to increase the accuracy, you need to use highly advanced models such as uh, advanced machine learning models or deep learning models. One of the case studies could be the sanction screening. Many people, organizations, countries are sanctioned by international bodies, by many countries, by different governments because of the, the criminal background, right? Many people have criminal background, they're either terrorist or they're funding terrorists uh, or they're doing criminal activities such as human trafficking, drug dealing, or some countries are also under sanction. So how do you know if the transaction is related to someone who is under sanction? And hence the transaction should be blocked. On one hand, it's it's a model related to uh, transaction monitoring, but it's also important to know who are the people who are under sanction. It, you, you do not always have the list of people, or list of organization who are under sanction. And that can also be modeled. And all these problems, like all three of them that we have discussed so far, are classification problems. You really need to classify um, events and non-events whether it's a suspicious transaction or not, right? So it's a zero one event or event non-event. It's a binary classification model and many advanced modeling technique can be used for that. Anti-fraud system is one other uh, 
uh, advanced analytical system that you can build to combat financial crime. Um, payment companies normally come across many payment requests uh, with fraudulent intention. Um, it's difficult to assess which are fraudulent, which are not, because many e-commerce companies do not have good credit history. So it's very difficult to know whether the request is legit one or not. Some e-commerce companies may be very legit, but because they do not have credit history, the model might uh, classify them as illegit, but they are not. So that's a big challenge. And most of the payment companies, Visa or MasterCard or other sort of uh, credit card companies, they are building models to classify a fraudulent payment request uh, from the, no, the good ones. Okay, So that's again a classification problem. Sometimes these systems are using the alternate data to improve the prediction accuracy. There could still be chances of misclassification, uh, but the idea is to uh, reduce that. The idea is to increase the accuracy rate actually. And alternate systems can also be, alternate data can be used in order to increase the accuracy. So what kind of methodology uh, which can be used? Now remember that in your data, you will not find too many events in these problems, right? All the four case studies that we have discussed, you will not find many events. Uh, that means uh, if there are like 100,000 transactions, there may be just 10 uh, suspicious transactions. Okay, 10 or 15, right? That's not very uh, big actually, right? That's very small. So this is a classic um, problem of low event classification. And that's very difficult because if you build a model on that, it is prone to over uh, fitting. And uh, model building therefore is very, very challenging. You need to do sampling properly in order to build a model. Otherwise it is prone to overfit it. Anomaly detection methods can be used. Anomaly detection methods are used where you have a uh, few cases of outliers, a few cases of uh, events which are very different from the other non-events. Okay, And classification techniques like random forest, boosting, bagging, neural networks can be used. What is important for this kind of modeling is that you assess your model performance very well. So cross validation should be properly done. Um, and then monitoring should also be done on a regular basis. You can also use time series modeling. Uh, you can predict the number of events in the future for a given time based on your historical data that can be used as a benchmarking actually. So that can be used uh, in the monitoring activities of uh, anomaly detection models or the classification models that we just discussed. These are some of the very uh, familiar case studies you can try out if you're working in uh, financial crime area, whether you're working in, in fintechs or whether you're working in banks or insurance companies, payment companies. I'm sure you already know this because I think most of the banks are now doing them. But these are some of the things we will discuss more about you know, these actual case study, take some examples in some other video. Thank you.